Hi everybody, hope you're good. Well, I've just got back from my amazing trip to Hawaii, which was awesome to say the least. It was like 25, 28 degrees every day, sunny, humid, fantastic. And I'm back in weather in Brittany where it's like eight, nine degrees, mostly cloudy and gray and cold, and I am freezing. However, since I've been gone, the Asian hornet nest I showed you has been destroyed, but they've actually destroyed it really carefully because they realized it was a beautiful nest and make an excellent specimen. So now I'm gonna cut it out and show you a bit of time lapse cutting it out and then we can have a look at it at the end and see what, what it's like on the inside because it's absolutely amazing thing. Despite them being an absolute P in the A, these insects are incredible. <laughs> So I'm not taking any chances still. The nest is killed, as far as we know, and, but there's no activity outside. Um, even in, I've seen Asian hornets flying in four or five degrees at the end of the season, when they're desperately trying to get their queens out. And there's none of that going on. This is totally dead. But I'm still gonna wear my bee suit in case one young one did fly out and bang me in the face or sting me. It's just not worth the risk. And I've got the kit to cut around it. So I'm going to trim around the nest and we'll expose it and we'll have a really good look. It should look fantastic because it's, it's only, we haven't had any rain since it was destroyed. So hopefully the nest will be really good to preserve. Well, there it is, it's absolutely huge. You can see it was injected just here and just here. That white powder is like a pyrethrin based powder. So it's absolutely a massive nest. I mean, it's just started to fall a bit because I've actually cut a lot of the brambles away. So what I'm gonna do in a minute is I'm gonna cut the rest away and then um, you'll be able to have a look inside hopefully, but I just want, definitely don't wanna damage it. I'm gonna try and keep it in one piece. So I'll probably cut the rest away with secateurs and um, just try and support it so we can have a really good look at it. There's a lot of dead hornets underneath, obviously, where they've just died. And I imagine the inside will be pretty rancid. Um, and you can see that there. That's what an Asian hornet looks like. I've got lots of specimens inside that um, I'm going to keep in uh, alcohol. The, the main thing is yellow legs and the black band across the middle at the back. That's the key thing. There's loads and loads of information on what to look for and how to identify them. And there's also an app that I believe the, um, uh, either the British Beekeepers Association or something like that has uh, produced so that you can identify an Asian hornet easily. They are very um, easy to identify and they're actually pretty different to the common hornet Vesper crabo. The common hornet Vesper crabo is actually generally a little bit bigger than these and it's clearly yellow and sort of brown in colour across the abdomen, whereas that has got a clearly defined patch of black and the yellow, and the yellow legs are the dead giveaway. But this is the kind of thing you're looking at. This is the size you get when you get a full developed nest. Just shows you how prolific they are. And this one would have, would have probably gone on to produce maybe 200 queens this autumn, which would, and we've just been trapping loads of queens this week. So I'm quietly confident that we got all the queens just before they disperse, which at the end of the day isn't going to make a huge difference because all around us there's nests that we haven't been able to get. So there's still be a lot of queens, but every year we trap in the spring and we, and also nature does quite a good job. Apparently only about two to 5% of, of queens that overwinter make it through to make a nest the following spring. Obviously we want to keep as many down as we can. We want to kill as many as we can, but we just have to do the best we can in reality. I'm just going to show you some of these workers again just so you can identify the classic. There you go. If you can see that there, let's try and get a really good close up on it. So you've got the yellow uh, abdomen there and the yellow legs and there's that band across the back, which is, <laughs> which is um, kind of the classic, I'd say the classic thing there. You can't mistake these. You really cannot. A, a common hornet has a completely yellow and black abdomen, whereas this has got one tiny fine band 
and then one band further down and the yellow feet you see that's the dead giveaway and a little bit smaller than the than the common horn at Vespa Crabo. So there you go. I'm glad this is dead. I can finish cutting it out now and we'll take it back to around the corner to the house. Not that that's far away. This is the underneath of the nest. And there's still one or two that are just limping around but they're all on the way out. I'd love to actually find the queen in here. If there was the original queen, she may well still be in the inside. But there's a lot of uh, hornets here that have just died and they're just kind of hanging in there. But it's, the nest is completely finished. Completely. So I've just started cutting into this nest to uh to show you inside and what have I found within a week there's a mouse's nest and look at what's happened this is this is a classic example that a mouse has died the mouse has gone in this week and I know this is this week because look this is moss that's just been gathered and sure enough the poor little thing has died it's been poisoned but that's so unusual to see that I mean then that could get into the food chain and then that could be eaten by a bar now but you know we've got this dilemma this is the great battle of nature where we have to control the nuisance insects but at the same time when we do that we've got to look at what is affected so this mouse would have gone in three or four days after because it would have come along in the brambles there and gone oh look it can smell all that food and then it's gone in there made a very quick nest because there's been no resistance by the hornets and the hornets as far as the mouse is concerned are like a meal on a plate ready to go they're juicy succulent full of protein so it's made this nest inside which is just incredible and then straight away it's died so I'll just pull this out a bit. You can see where it's been chewing the nest. So that shows you the galleries you've got inside this thing. And it's absolutely incredible to be honest. Unfortunately where the brambles are, it's um, really reinforced it well. So I'm just gonna pause the video and clean this up a bit and I'll be able to show you more in a minute. So there's the galleries I was on about, and they basically are, we're making larvae here. These larvae were capped over to be hatched out, so there's one. That's all full of larvae, so there's obviously different stages of the nest. You can see the top ones there, I think they've been eaten by that mouse. They've actually rotted through, and they're all just black, and they never actually formed. Whereas the ones this side, there you go. It should give you some idea of the size of the nest and how many queens they can produce at the end of the year. It's a pretty impressive thing. I mean, when you see that, it's enormous. So this was got to at the right time. Fantastic thing. So I hope you liked the video and the little update on this uh, rather gargantuan nest. At least it's dead now and we got peace of mind that we did get all those queens before they were released. Anyway, what, what more can you do? Um, it's more really to make sure the public don't get injured and that's why, just important to mention that that's why people are dying of these insects. It's not so much the size of the nest, it's just the ferocity that they attack. Common hornet's nest the same size that you would have been unlucky to get stung. Unlucky if you disturbed it. Whereas these things, you only have to go within two meters of the nest and just knock it slightly and they're out on, they're on you like a rash. Just to bear that in mind, I just hope all you guys in the UK don't have this to deal with. But I'll just say this, and I've said it before, you'll just get on with it, you'll deal with it. You have got a lot more foot soldiers on the ground, so it's pretty likely that um, any outbreaks will be pretty well dealt with. Whereas over here in France, the problem is we have such a huge, vast country. Don't forget, the UK has the same population as France, but France is four times bigger. So there's that less what I call foot, foot soldiers on the ground to deal with these problems. 
They will come, they're over there in the UK already, but it looks like you're keeping on top of them by destroying the nest before they produce queens every year. But the problem is you're gonna get reinfection all the time and that is the issue. We here will never get rid of them now. They are totally in ground. They've gone down into Spain, North Portugal. They're making their way into Germany, right across. The whole of Europe is basically infested with these little, little things. And they're a complete pain and people are dying because of the ferocity they, they attack at. So we've got to look at alternative treatments and um, spring trapping and individual treatment seems to be the best cause. This is too big. They should never have got this size, but hey ho. It's just an example of when you think you're kind of on the ball and you're, you're supposed to know what these things do, it just proves they can catch you completely unawares. And I hold my hand up and say, I really was totally surprised by the size of this thing, uh, so close to my house and, I'm not, and, that, and that I hadn't noticed it before. So, bye for now. Enjoy.